so with that, let me turn over to uh, Dr. Jairaman to lead us off uh, on the overall narrative, uh, the question of carbon budgets, uh, historical emissions, and a lot of the uh, kind of overarching framing elements that seem to be coming out from the working group reports, uh, including climate resilient development. So Dr. Jairaman, uh, I think you have 15 minutes. Yes, uh, thank you, Anand. Uh, I would just request time out while uh, I try to get my PowerPoint uh, up. Uh, so, Uh, Silesh Nayak and me. my greetings to colleagues uh, and friends, uh, both from across the country and some guests from outside as well. Uh, I am waiting for my PowerPoint to load. So, let me say at the outset uh, to anticipate some background remarks and save some time. Uh, 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 and that is that uh, by the outset that the entire effort of the uh, IPCC, the effort that it represents, is a very challenging one. And uh, as a result, uh, uh, you know, we must not underestimate both the extraordinary of the enterprise and uh, it's a rather unique character. Now, of course, uh, various uh, other, uh, uh, you know, uh, similar uh, setups are available for different sciences. But this is in its breadth and sweep is something quite uh, extraordinary. So uh, this, uh, I think, uh, uh, is, uh, is very important to know. Uh, for those who are new to the uh, process maybe of what the IPCC is, that uh, as was pointed out, it is not mandated to produce original research, but it does assess the state of knowledge uh, in broadly what you may call climate science, though the term science may not be applicable to all aspects of uh, uh, what is being discussed or considered. It relates sometimes to social sciences, economics, so very different kinds of interpretation of the word science. But nevertheless, broadly assesses the state of climate science. The, there is the physical science basis from working group one, impacts adaptation and vulnerability from working group two, and mitigation of climate change from working group three. Uh, the, uh, in some ways, the uh, summary for policy makers uh, is a very uh, important and key aspect, but it's also uh, necessary to be remind, to remind ourselves uh, that science is uh, something constantly uh, in the making. And uh, it is uh, not to be set in, uh, in any case, it is an open-ended enterprise. So the summary for policy makers needs to be read with the technical summary and the report to fully appreciate what are the assumptions, the techniques, challenges, and of course, the advances in our understanding. It's very interesting to note that uh, partly the media does, has started doing this. So I would consider that a positive sign, though whether they are always equipped to uh, decode what is uh, written in uh, the text of the report perhaps is an issue for discussion. Uh, so, uh, so I would also, you know, it's very common in the media to say that the IPCC says, and uh, even amongst colleagues uh, who are participating in the IPCC process, uh, it is uh, sometimes the uh, desire to be portrayed as the authority uh, is uh, somewhat uh, uh, 
uh, very present. And so uh, this, uh, I would say, is uh, problematic. Uh, broad agreement is, of course, useful and important because we need that for uh, global cooperation. But it's also essential to remember that we live in a grossly unequal world. It is unequal in terms of endowments. It is unequal in terms of capabilities. It is unequal in terms of entitlements. Uh, it is unequal in so so, in some sense, uh, I personally consider that the key challenge for the IPCC is dealing with global and international inequalities while trying to promote international cooperation. And of course, uh, essentially because, uh, you know, it rests on the assessment of knowledge that is produced, uh, you know, the global uh, disequilibrium, which is huge in the global literature on climate and the global discourse on climate that is dominated by 20% of the world, that ends up speaking for the other 80%. This is, of course, part of the challenge. So, uh, let me begin by uh, taking you through what I think are uh, some of the uh, key issues that uh, uh, this uh, report confronts us with. Uh, one, of course, is it's very important to underline before we take to the other issues that the urgency of climate action is very clear. I would say, if you ask me personally, that it was clear uh, two reports ago, at least, uh, uh, in many ways. Uh, there are parts of the world where uh, government has been in the hand of those who refuse to be convinced by climate science. So uh, it is important to keep restating it, I suppose. So there are unprecedented levels of concentration of greenhouse gases not seen before. Uh, and we are not talking of human history, but of uh, uh, geological time. Uh, the unambiguous signal of uh, surface temperature increase uh, is very clear. If the Paris limit is 1.5 degrees, we are over the two-third mark in this respect. Uh, of this uh, 1.07, these are uh, technical details, so perhaps let me skip over them. Uh, over land, of course, uh, this is not the average surface temperature. The land temperature is higher. Sea levels are unmistakably rising and uh, they're uh, more rapid over time. Uh, glaciers and Arctic ice caps are melting and of course uh, are major contributors to the sea level rise. And the extent of decrease of uh, Arctic sea uh, ice area in recent decades is truly uh, startling. So this is certainly there is no uh, gainsaying the urgency of climate action. But the whole question is, how do we manage this? You know, how do we deal with this problem? Uh, historically, uh, since the Industrial Revolution, the uh, carbon has been the basis of all that we consider uh, material improvement in our well-being. But yet, as a friend of mine remarked, we have to let go of this uh, life raft, if you wish, of what uh, enabled uh, human adaptation to life on the planet. This is what we have to let go. So in that sense, carbon is not only pollution, it is also a resource. So managing the global carbon budget uh, is uh, very important. And one of the outstanding results uh, of AR6, uh, which runs as a thread through both Working Group 1 uh, uh, and Working Group 3, though the emphasis is uh, not as much as we think it should be, but this uh, is really confirmed as the outstanding key metric 
for determining how much room and time we have to limit temperature increase. Notwithstanding the uh, global discourse which, is, which was constructed, it is not uh, cumulative uh, emissions is the key and not simply the attainment of net uh, zero. Uh, and this is very clearly stated in uh, uh, just so many words as is required in uh, working group one. So that is, I think, uh, a very key result uh, from, certainly from an Indian perspective, but also I think from the perspective of many developing countries. Uh, we do note with some regret that, that some of the pub outreach material from the IPCC working group one does not seem to have quite given as much airtime to this uh, uh, concept as uh, we think it deserves. Uh, the other is that, uh, that historical emissions is a term clearly recognized. The total carbon budget, which was kind of hinted at, if you wish, in the special report on 1.5, is now very clearly defined and stated uh, cumulative emissions to 2019 are historical and uh, there is a remaining carbon budget and the total carbon budget is the sum of the two. So this places squarely on the agenda the question of uh, how much of the total carbon budget has been exhausted uh, and it lends very clearly to the notion of a global commons, a point that India has always emphasized. Uh, so they have continued to rise more than half of it uh, uh, of these cumulative emissions. In fact, 58% uh, occurred before the convention was signed. Uh, we have very little of the budget that remains and this constraint on the remaining carbon budget is of a course of serious concern to developing countries in particular. So the natural question with historical emissions that developing countries have always grappled with, recognized very clearly in the UNFCC, uh, that uh, to which all countries are signatory, is the question of responsibility for uh, uh, historical emissions and it is very clear that uh, developed countries in this uh, graph, it is North America, Europe, Aus Australia, Japan, and New Zealand, uh, they have consumed 43% without the Lulu CF, this would be 54. I'm not sure I have the number exactly right, thereabouts. However, India's point always that it has contributed uh, less 4%, in fact, it is less because South Asia itself is 4% uh, and uh, India is only a part. So historical responsibility is very clear. But even today, equity is a problem. There is gross disparity in per capita emissions, global disparity in per capita emissions in terms of uh, households, and the bottom 50% of households uh, emit only 13 to 15% of emissions. And a lot of them, a very significant percentage of them, is in fact uh, in India. And when you talk of the 41% of global population in countries with less than 3 gigatons per year, half the world average, 17% uh, uh, of the global population, so roughly... Uh, more than a third of this 41% is from India. One of the most important results, and I will wait for my colleague, uh, Dr. Ramesh, uh, who was formerly head of the Indian Meteorological Department to talk about this. Methane is important, but it is carbon dioxide that it is uh, critical. By and large, black carbon and organic carbon cancel each other's impact. 
uh, non ghg uh, emission reductions are uh, important when you reach a net zero but uh, while all reduction of all uh, greenhouse gases is important privileging methane as a early uh, low uh, hanging fruit uh, seems now quite uh, mistaken the emphasis uh, let me not get into these details uh, there is an important story about uh, air quality control and climate mitigation. Uh, uh, developing countries have been told that if, uh, uh, if you reduce, uh, if you undertake mitigation, you also get the benefit of reducing air pollution. Uh, uh, but that uh, is not very, is that quite clearly is not as easy as it sounds. And uh, there is considerable effort in working group one to set this right. Uh, both are necessary, but that the one is a co-benefit of the other, uh, it can hardly be established. So this, uh, so as the chapter says, you need a integrated view of development goals, mitigation and air pollution and say simplistic accounts of a, uh, you know, a win-win uh, two for the price of one, if you wish, simply doesn't work. Uh, five minutes, Dr. Jairaman. I know. So let me speed up. So uh, a very important, I think, positive view one may take of uh, working group two is, of course, the urgency of adaptation. And I think this uh, point is well taken. Uh, and the uh, very significant proportion of the global population who are vulnerable is important. But as uh, uh, Professor uh, Anand Patwardhan raised in his uh, introductory remarks, what really should be the limits to adaptation? So with uh, some experience of the and knowledge of what uh, lies in the special report on 1.5, uh, the tendency uh, throughout working group two uh, uh, to state 1.5 as some uh, very thus far and no further in terms of adaptation and uh, pointing out the, that as some uh, limit in a particular sense, uh, which should not be crossed at all. A Lakshman Rekha, as we would say in India, seems uh, an issue which needs to be discussed much more substantially in the years to come. In any case, we will confront it in real time. Uh, nature based solutions, I think, uh, were put in their appropriate place. Uh, uh, ecosystem based approaches uh, uh, is the term that most countries, especially developing countries, uh, prefer. Though nature based solutions is used, uh, the potential to mislead is a serious issue, which the report acknowledges. There are several refu uh, references to equity and climate justice. Uh, on my last count, there were 25 of them in the SPM. Regrettably, again, uh, I, we find that this is not perhaps reflected in the outreach. But I, th I must draw attention, and this is, I think, an outstanding contribution which we have from Working Group 2. This remarkable statement that tries the vulnerability to climate change to the larger context of what we may call broadly development. So it even uh, notes uh, colonialism, historical and ongoing patterns of inequity. So this is, I think, a statement that uh, developing countries and all those interested in equity and climate justice must take forward. And I think this is a, a very good thing to have. 
there is, I think, uh, uh, one has to tease it out of the uh, working group two, if you wish, and also working group three. But what is very clear that development and planned development is the key to adaptation and mitigation. Working group two missed the important WMO atlas, which shows that mortality for most climate disasters is declining. Uh, economic losses, of course, increase. Agriculture, for instance, uh, shows that technological change is critical. And somehow, I think this is not adequately captured in working group two. Uh, there is an impatience to attribute things to climate, which I wear caution is advised. Conflict was another such arena. But what it shows is, uh, uh, you know, to provision of infrastructure and basic services is critical to dealing with human vulnerability and the intersection of climatic and non-climatic uh, drivers currently and in the future is uh, critical. So in some sense, the lesson, if you wish, is that for developing countries, the, uh, uh, the ball game is, you know, keep your eye on the ball that is development. And there, regrettably, I think uh, the IPCC sixth assessment report uh, has a number of uh, significant weaknesses. The term development is used almost as if it were a mere change of state, though its progressive character is universally recognized in the common sense in which it is used in the English language. Uh, we have climate resilient development in working group two, sustainable development in working group three. And the conf confusion is compounded by the use of the term transition. Now, of course, uh, all of us perhaps at the special group on 1.5 agreed that the term transition may be useful, but to use it in some sense like a mathematical definition of what transformations should take place seems uh, uh, a very poor uh, uh, rendition of what confronts countries like India. Does the term transition uh, mean, uh, uh, what does it mean, an energy transition to all those uh, who forget decarbonization are basically in a state of being uncarbonized? So I think that that is the issue. Uh, the, the linkages between adaptation and mitigation tend to emphasize uh, mitigation, but you know sometimes uh, adaptation needs infrastructure, adaptation needs construction, adaptation needs poverty eradication, and uh, we, nobody is going to be able to do it without a carbon budget. Uh, well, you know, having said that, I think uh, one of the positive features of the uh, summary for policymakers is this uh, graph, part of a, uh, a two-part uh, figure. It captures, I think, very important aspects of uh, what climate resilience should be. But whether we will be able to realize it in practice, whether we have even adequately reflected on it in the uh, three reports thus far, I think is an open question. Let me just very briefly end by uh, not brushing under the carpet the very real fact that the discussions that mark the approval of the Sixth assessment report were marked by deeply contentious issues. Uh, these have been recorded uh, adequately by the Earth Negotiations Bulletin and the Third World Network report. So this is not something that comes only from any personal experience. Uh, uh, we, I think it was quite appalling, if we may use the word, to see the pushback by developed countries on references to the develop, developing divide 
and any reference to historic responsibility. This is a scientific fact, and you cannot simply brush it under the carpet. Uh, differentiation in the mitigation burden was an unwanted uh, issue to raise. Uh, we, uh, you know, so that uh, what uh, we see today, what remains is by virtue of a lot of discussion. Uh, the repeated attempt to substitute climate finance by climate investment, and uh, that is not merely a word change, but a very significant shift in emphasis, which is very problematic for uh, developing countries. Though, to be fair, Working Group 2 and Working Group 3 recognize quite strongly the importance of public finance for both adaptation and mitigation. Adaptation and mitigation are spoken about in the same breath, certainly as a globe, yes, this is necessary. But to su suggest that this would erase any differentiation in location of where adaptation is to take place and mitigation is to take place uh, is uh, deeply problematic again. There are constant references to vulnerable and marginalized. Uh, but uh, these references are very often uh, in the context uh, of as if they are a minority. Even the report itself recognizes working group two, as I pointed out a little earlier, that almost 3.6 billion people are vulnerable. So they are. Uh, uh, significant, if not a major part of the world. Finally, on technology, we were faced with a very odd situation. There's a great effort to push back on the role of technology in adaptation, together with severe over-optimism on technology in mitigation. So that was a very uh, odd, uh, I think, that imbalance persists. So I will stop here. My apologies to the moderator uh, for having overshot my time and my apologies to colleagues as well on that talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Jairaman. That was in, that was a really uh, amazing sort of overview. Uh, and I much appreciate, I think, the points you raised about the, some of the most significant findings, especially I think the threads around the carbon budget uh, the issue of equity, uh, and also I think the issue of lifestyles, which is related to the question of, you know, uh, the differential patterns of consumption that I thought was, again, something significant. And also I think the sort of contentious issues that you have highlighted, which I'm sure will come up, uh, they have not gone away, and I'm sure they'll come up now in the synthesis report in a few months' time. 